It was a perfect day. The sun was shining. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. And I just made it out of the car dealership with enough time to catch a beautiful summer sunset. Just kidding. <laughs> it was 2010, I was 18, and I could really care less about a sunset. I just wanted to go to the mall and show my friends my new car. So I'm on my way, and I just bought the car, so you can imagine how surprised I was to see the engine light come on. And then seconds later, the brakes started to act shifty. I couldn't slow down. There were people everywhere, and I was in a panic. <laughs> Did I just buy a car without working brakes? Is this even legal? My parents, what am I going to tell them? And before I could finish my next thought, I was approaching a red light. And by the time I tried to react, it was too late. The story I just told you is true. But instead of a car, it's a phone. And instead of me, it's you. As a cybersecurity specialist, I see the equivalent of this happen every day. Parents spending their kids' tuition money on scammers that promise to double their investment but just take the funds and run. Grandmothers wiring social security checks to fake companies making fake claims. Families losing their homes because they're victims of identity theft. Why? <laughs> Why is this happening and who is responsible for it? At least when it comes to cars, we know where to turn. There are systems in place, right? There are insurance companies, mechanical shops, car dealerships, laws, regulations. Options that have been communicated to us. Options we have control over. We can decide whether we want to fix the problem ourselves or use the systems in place to help us. But when it comes to our phones and the internet and technology, unfortunately, those same mechanisms don't apply. How is it that every single one of you in this room knows how to wear a seatbelt, but doesn't know how to install multi-factor authentication or a virtual private network on their devices? I'll tell you why. Because it's called multi-factor authentication. <laughs> The reality is, if we want to care about consumer digital safety, we have to care about consumer language. It's one thing if uh, experts and tech bros want to use fancy jargon and uh, cool acronyms. But it's another thing if they expect us to understand what they're talking about. That would be like buying a car and having to know all of the systems of a brake just to drive safely. It's not an even exchange. Especially since we're the ones putting money in their pockets. They should be responsible for implementing proper digital safety mechanisms in the technology we use and communicating it in a way that we understand. That's why I've dedicated my entire career to keeping people like us from running through that red light. Which means I teach tech companies and people in the cybersecurity industry uh, to meet you where you are and to speak to you in a language that you understand. George Bernard Shaw once said, the, simple, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it's taken place. Far too often, good communication is confused with sounding smart. People believe good communication has to do with big words and fancy jargon, but it doesn't. Good communication is simple. Good communication is clear. If you leave here today with nothing else, I want you to remember one thing. If you don't understand cybersecurity, it is not your fault. You are entitled to ask questions you are entitled to understand the risk involved with the technology you use every day. But most importantly, you are entitled to simple language. Thank you.